So take a minute. I'm kind of behind the times. I just got a website. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, enjoy that. Um, Please request permission to record the meeting. Uh, let's I was going to record it. Okay. Um, yeah, I can give you permission, I think, wherever it says record. Uh, I'm actually recording it on OBS, but I can record it too. Uh, do I need to give you permission? Yeah, I'll just rec I'll just record it right here, and then when you send me your buffered one, I can delete it or whatever. Uh, okay, that's fine. All right, I think we're live. Um, I'm always I have to check Facebook just to make sure. And uh, forgive me, everybody. Just want to make sure it's working. Yeah, technical stuff is. Oh, my account might be restricted if I... It's, not my, it's my Achilles heel. It's not my strength. Okay. So we are actually live right now. Uh, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, Facebook friends, etc. Uh, you obviously know who I am because this is my Facebook page. But who you don't know is the person I'm about to introduce to you. Uh, he's a longtime friend of mine. His name is Jason Nightingale. And I first met him... Well, I should tell you what we're going to be talking about first. So he... Uh, he is going to be talking about something that uh, I kind of know very little about um, as far as finances, the financial world, and things of that nature. Um, but more specifically, what I call, or what I should say, Frederick Bastiat uh, considered legalized plunder. And so um, he has a very interesting perspective that he'd want to be able to share with you and some possible solutions. Uh, I'm all about freedom, and that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, protesting and screaming constitutional violations. What it also does is it talks about uh, uh, interviews I have with people to keep us healthy uh, and keep us financially safe as well as much as possible. So, Jason, thanks for joining me today. All right, Tom. Well, thanks for having me. Nice. Well, I, I I've known Jason for uh, since what two thousand three, thirteen. Thirteen. Okay, so two thousand thirteen. I first met him, <laughs> and I can't even remember. And I can't even really remember when we met, how we met. But we um, met. We met on. <laughs> I was recruiting, and we met. I I met you in a restaurant. You and your wife came and met me in a restaurant, so I could interview you. Oh yeah. And so it was. Uh, I, 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 I think I desperately needed some work at that time. And so I, uh, Jason thought that I was a pretty sharp guy and thought that uh, I had him fooled. But anyway, he thought I was a sharp guy and wanted to get involved in, in trying to make some money. So I got involved with him, and uh, he, he, we worked for. Am I allowed to say the company name? Sure. Uh, National Agents Alliance (NAA). Uh, where uh, the first thing, the first order of business I think I had to do was accept the fact that I was going to sell insurance. Oh my gosh, it was the most it was the mi most miserable thing I've ever done. I have never even been called names that bad in politics in the last six years since I've been since I've been with my current employer at all. I mean, it was just absolutely horrible. I think I may have done okay, and I don't know. We ran into some problems, and I decided to try something else. None of it had to do with Jason, of course, but. Um, uh, he lives up in uh, in the northern part of Idaho, and I uh, wanted to be able to have him on because I hadn't seen him in a while and talk about what he knows. And so if you wanted to fill in any of those gaps, um, you can. Um, or go ahead and start uh, telling us what you know. <laughs> well, I won't tell you all of what I know. We'll only be here 30 seconds, though. Um, well, I'll tell you what. Uh, I've had a financial insurance practice since 2012. Didn't do too much on the financial end in 2012, but when I got started, as Tom mentioned, we were with an FMO called National Agents Alliance, which has a few thousand agents across the nation under a guy named Andy Albright. And they market mortgage protection and final expense for life insurance to cover people for burial plans and to pay off their house when they die. And as we all know, less than 2% of any people are looking for life insurance at any one time. So, you know, in 2017, I was looking for a way to kind of take my business to the next level. I had traveled the whole state. As Tom knows, I'd get up at four in the morning on Mondays, drive down to South Idaho. Him and his wife were gracious enough to let me stay at their place a few times there in Caldwell or Middleton, I guess you'd say. Um, but anyway, uh, and then I would get home only to do it again on Thursday morning to get up at 4 a.m. and head out and to go run appointments on Friday and Saturday and head back and scrub paperwork, send in apps on Sunday, rebook appointments and head out again on Monday at 4 a.m. And that went on for month after month after month. 
to be in our producers top 10 club writing 10 apps a week with Sean Mike and and I had to work my tail off because if you look at a picture of Idaho at night it looks like North Korea compared to Connecticut <laughs> who the guy that we were under that Tom and I were under so anyway in 2017 I thought okay I've got 500 clients I need to work my book of business now and see how I can provide additional value to my clients but I need to see first what it is in a household that can be fixed. So I looked at my own life and I said, okay, what is it if I had a guy who was just the perfect guy in finance, what is it that he would fix? And I'm looking at my own financial situation thinking, well, I'm 47 years old at the time when I thought of this, I'm 51 now, and I haven't saved enough for retirement. I'm not even on track where I need to be and my mortgage. And I got to thinking about my mortgage. Yeah, my mortgage, I still owe 15 years on that stupid thing. And I still owe $140,000. And that started ticking me off. So I thought, I think I'm on to something that I could relate to a lot of people. There's very few people looking for life insurance. Yeah, most people need it. Very few people are looking for it. But everybody's looking for a way to get out of debt, right? So I started looking at it. I'm thinking, well, that's kind of a big subject. There's probably a lot of people doing debt elimination. But when I started coming on to typing in things like replacing your mortgage and different ways to do banking, because I was a little upset at the way my mortgage payments Still, 60% of my payment was interest. And I'm like, I'm not even down to 50-50 yet on my payment. And I've been sending Wells, I shouldn't say Wells Fargo, but I've been sending Wells Fargo money for 15 years. <laughs> and, you know, that kind of- Cats out of the off. bag. <laughs> hey, and, also- you know, They say if you don't, those who understand compound interest collect it and those who don't pay it. And evidently, I didn't know anything about compound interest. So I started looking up compound interest and I found a neat subject. I came across this book called Becoming Your Own Banker, and I started learning that you could actually collect compound interest from an insurance company. So I got to thinking about my savings account, and I'm like, you know, you don't even get a quarter of a percent in a savings account. 0 0.3, 0 0.4 is a good one, you know, but usually they're 0.025 or 0 0.1, you know, they're so, and some of them you got to keep 10 or 20,000 in them just to get a, a rate that's like what I quoted. So I'm like, well, so if you could use a modified whole life insurance policy from a dividend paying life insurance company, a mutual company, and design the policy backwards, not for death benefit, but for maximum cash build, you can get up to six, six and a half percent dividends tax free. I thought I scratched my head and I thought, there's got to be something with this, something that I'm not seeing. So for like three days, I'm looking up the infinite banking concept. And I came across this book by a lady named Pamela Yellen. Uh, bank on yourself and I looked into this book and I'm like wow you can actually create a bank account inside of a life insurance policy and I got to thinking I could actually take a loan from that policy when it gets flush with cash and pay my mortgage off early but then I realized something what about my checking account so then I started looking at my checking account and I'm like okay so a checking account you don't get any money for either but I realized a way that you could actually convert your mortgage into a different product and run your debt and your checking together and negate 70% of your interest. Now, I don't know about you guys listening to this podcast, but when I was in school, they drew a car going this way at 60 and a car going this way at 60. And the goal is to see how long it takes for them to collide and what the uh, effect of the impact is. Well, if this car was just heading toward a wall at 60, there's only 60 miles an hour worth of damage times the mass of this object being greater than the car. But when you have two cars of equal mass going 60 toward one another, the damage is exponential. So if you've got your debt roller coasting down in a better strategy and you're saving toward retirement, getting compound interest, you're effectively taking the power away from the bank. And you're doing back to the bank what they've been doing to you. That's pretty interesting, isn't it? That's a fantastic concept. I know that many of my friends that are uh, that either will be listening or are listening, um, uh, have their ears perked up right about now. <laughs> let, me, let me go to a screen share here just a little bit and draw you a little picture. So I run my practice called Safe Money Solutions. Can you guys see the slide? Yeah, looks great. And I'm based up here in north central Idaho, and I joined a financial distribution platform of a friend of mine I've had since 2017, and I teach these concepts to financial advisors because financial advisors are often worried about where your money goes in the end, but they don't help clients with spendable cash flow. And I'm actually writing a book right now uh, called The Banking Secrets Nobody Taught You. And it's basically helping people uncover how they can get more spendable cash flow. 
I'm licensed in my home state in about 40 states in total. If somebody listening decides they want to get a hold of me and you're in one of these gray states, don't worry. It only takes about a day to get a new license. But uh, I, I practice over Zoom camera just like we're doing today with me and Tom. And, oops, I think I hit stop share, Tom. Oops. I meant to hit this button, right? Here. There you go. And talk a little bit about uh, what happened to me. I was at a convention in Milwaukee, and um, I got approached, and these people asked me if they could interview me for their magazine. I got featured in the top 100 in finance magazine for the strategies that I'm teaching. Uh, and that really, really exploded some things here this spring. And I'm really excited to see where that's going to be headed. And I have a link to that article right there on the top right. And uh, I have that also on my website. But I use a holistic process, meaning that I look at everything someone's doing to create cash flow, to help them reach the savings goals they've set for themselves. Um, basically, our method will reveal uh, to the client how the paychecks, how you're handling your paycheck, and who co is going to be who collects and pays the most interest. You know, we're often, we often often um, look at strategies to help people get results that they're looking for. So we talk about something that uh, uh, Maps and Money talks about called the four domains of finance, and. What we try to do is to, to develop protection for our client in the form of insurances, eliminate debt and grow assets, increasing cash flow all at the same time. Your financial advisor might tell you that's not possible or not, not wise, but I'm going to show you how it is. Uh, so, Tom, do we have time for me to draw a little bit on the screen and talk about this a little bit? Sure. I've got uh, 50 minutes. Okay. So, basically, if I can get my pencil out, when we look at a house, let's just call this your finances. And this is a healthy financial house the roof is where the protection comes so when a storm tries to get inside or sun tries to heat the house up or cold tries to cool it down we insulate the house in the roof and what we insulate our finances with life insurance if you know sickness or illness or injury comes I mean, maybe you've got a pretty decent income to protect. Maybe you need disability insurance. Or maybe you're elderly and you need long-term care. Or maybe health insurance. All these insurances, I know people say I'm insurance poor. But if you know anybody who's collected their premiums from the, or their payouts from paying in their premiums, they realize that this protection is very valuable. That provides safety and coverage for everything inside the house. So when we look at this column, Unfortunately, the average American doesn't even have $60,000 saved up. And a lot of them have a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of debt still. And so you can see how this house, what would really happen is this stud is way over here, and the asset column is much smaller than the liabilities. Mm -hmm. So in our holistic process, we want to push this stud that direction. We want to shrink liabilities and build assets while keeping protection in place. And last but not least, and the foundation is what holds up the house. That's your cash flow. So, Tom, if we got a guy that's got $5,000 coming into his household, and he's got $4,800 going out, <coughs> and he's only leaving himself $200 for incidentals, does that sound good? No. No, it doesn't. No. That means his cash flow or his foundation is so thin, it would be more like about that thick, it would be easy for it to get a crack in it if the refrigerator went out, or the transmission went out, the average American, over 65% of Americans, I believe the number is, have to put a $500 emergency on a credit card. That's not good, is it? No way. That's right where the bank wants us. Yep. They want us to give our money to them and then buy it back in the form of mortgages, credit cards, and car loans. And so we're here to teach you how you don't have to do that. So basically, what the problem with the system, ever since we were little kids, we were taught to go get put our money in a piggy bank, you know, so we trust our banker. <clears throat> and when we want to change our liabilities up, we go see a banker. When we want to collect on our insurance, we go see our agent. When we want to change our cash flow, we go see our boss. <clears throat> and we ask him for a raise. Say, man, I've been here for years, boss. I need a raise. Right, Tom? Mm-hmm. need a raise. <laughs> yeah. Tom does a great job. Yes, I do. I, I think the guy needs a raise. That's so, right. And then our asset column, if we want to change that, we got to go see our financial advisor. That's too many people's hand in your money. But unfortunately, that's the way our system's set up. What if there was a way to provide your own protection <laughs> through a specially designed policy 
that would act like an umbrella policy to make up where you're short, that would link to tax-free assets, and yes, I did say tax-free for retirement, that you could pull from before age 59 and a half that would create cash flow that you could actually pay off debt with, which would, <coughs> excuse me, let me drink, drink a glass, uh, drink a water. It would help you pay off your liabilities earlier while keeping protection in place. You could actually fire your, your boss and become your own banker. What this perfect account is, if we wanted to create this perfect account, <coughs> what it's called is modified whole life insurance. Now, I'm going to show you three different things that we do, but the perfect account is modified whole life insurance. That's using a mutual company that pays a dividend for a cash payout by designing the policy for, ca for cash value. Now, if we had an account that we could put money into, Tom, and I'm just going to use you for my guinea pig since you're the one I'm on the radio show with today. I get that a lot. <laughs> and let's, call it the Munns, let's call it the Munns Family Trust. And let's just say that Tracy was going to go down and she was going to put money in the bank. And you owned this bank, but right across the street from it was Wells Fargo. Would you rather bank at your family bank that you owned, or would you rather bank at these guys' bank? Of course, my own family. Absolutely. Yep. So give me the number one reason or benefit to creating that perfect account, which would be your own family bank. Uh, why I would choose that side versus the other yeah, side? Why would you oh, bank trust. at Munn's Family Trust? Think about the reasons over Wells Fargo why you would bank there. Oh, trust for sure. Trust. Safety yep. and trust is number one yep. every time. Yep. Safety and trust. What about when it comes time to get your hands on your money and the bank's closed? If it's Munn's Family Bank, you've got the... Convenience. The key. Yeah. <laughs> the yep. convenience. Yep. That's called liquidity and mm -hmm. the convenience. That's right. Liquidity and convenience. You can get your hands on your money. What about when it comes time to, to loan money? What What's the process going to look like at your own bank versus Wells Fargo? Whatever I want. That's right. You're not going <laughs> to charge yourself none of them pesky fees, are you? Nope. You're not going to charge yourself a fee, and the rate of return or the interest rate goes to who? Us. Goes to Tom and Tracy. That's, That's right. right. And what I mentioned down here, last but not least, if this is going to be a perfect account, we need it to be tax-free. Yep. Did you know that an account like that exists? Uh, did you create it? <laughs> it, it, it absolutely exists, and it's with insurance companies, A-rated mutual insurance companies. But people hate insurance, man. They're going to go, oh, they no way. For what? They hate insurance for, what, for the wrong reasons. What they don't realize is there's actually a strategy that you can do to increase the power of your paycheck. So let's look at your checking account for a minute now. Now, has your banker ever offered you a checking account that could cover your house payment? No. No way he's done, done that. Has he told you that there's ways to negate up to 70% of the interest that you're paying? No. That they're charging you? No. Because standard checking accounts benefit who? The bank. Mm -hmm. And amortized loans are such high profit for a bank. The word mort in amortized comes from the Greek or Latin for morbid or mortality. It actually means the loan that never dies. Wow. And mortgage, mort, means yeah. death pledge. Gosh. And when they came out with a mortgage, men like you and me, Tom, were dead by our age. They didn't live into their 50s long because little things like the flu killed us in the 1800s. And most men died owing on their place unless they had received property from the from the government. So that's how the name mortgage came about. And it is high, high profit for the bank, and it keeps people indebted. You may, I, I wish I could look out across the audience and say, raise your hand if you know a 65 or 70-year-old retiree that still owes on their house. Most of the room will raise their hand. Mm -hmm. Banks love to give 80-year-old people 30-year mortgages. Why is that? They know they're not going to live to be 110. Because they know they're going to get that house for pennies on the dollar. It's going to be half paid off. So it's very rigid. And we, we, we help design that for flexibility. So we show you in your savings account how to get compound interest with the insurance policy that I talked about. We show you how you can borrow from it and actually receive credits when you repay yourself. We, we talk about that. And we show people how to earn tax-free dividends without the risk of a volatile market, such as the stock or, you know, 
buying into the you know the, the stock market out on the market uh, most insurance companies are more stable than most banks now, I'm gonna stop the screen share for a minute and I'm gonna hold up a book right here what did I do with uh, my banking book right here how privatized banking works now I write in my book I've got I'm writing a book right now um, that's called uh, banking secrets nobody taught you and I talk about in here what we call fractional reserve banking banks can loan your money up to nine times Tom yes they so can if everybody in Middleton went down to the bank and they wanted to take their money out at once there's a reason why they have that sticker on the front that says FDIC insured mm -hmm. they've got to be federal deposit insured to a quarter million per depositor because they may not have the money the day that you show up for your money and, and my, gotta call an armored car in. And my so listeners know all anything, about that. Gotta be backed by the Fed like that. That so, uh, sounds fishy. And in 2008, when the crash came down, guess who had to be bailed out? It wasn't insurance companies, guys. It was banks. Insurance companies are governed by the states, and insurance or banks understand that. And what they don't tell you, they don't sell you life insurance. They sell you what we call CDs. But what they don't tell you is these major banks hold millions and billions of dollars worth of life insurance. What do we got? Bank of America, Wells Fargo, JP, JP Chase Morgan, Morgan yeah. and U.S. Bank have billions and billions of dollars of life insurance. They go take policy loans that they're going to make money on, and they loan the money to you and me, and they get paid twice on it, and they put it back. And if they've got a non-direct recognition policy, they get paid a third time all in the same dollar. Now you take the IRS. They tax you when you make your money. They tax you when you hit 70 and a half with RMDs. And then when you die, they tax your family when they have to receive it. The IRA stress provision went away with the CARES and SECURE Act. You remember these new acts that came out? Sure. So now here the kid is, maybe mine or Tom's age, at the time of our life when we're probably making the most amount of money we've ever made, and we get mom or dad's inheritance, and we have to, the IRS is our, like our brother. He gets 50% inheritance on mom and dad's money it's just not fair so now you got the irs making a dollar on every dollar but we have another problem we haven't even talked about and coronavirus has only exacerbated it now trump isn't going to fix all the problems i mean i like trump but you know i'm not going to get into politics today <laughs> leave that to trump but our government spends so much money and where are we going to get all this money in at the end of 2025 ta all the tax breaks expire and there's going to be major tax reform so in january 2026 we'll have a different president by that time i hate to tell you this but taxes will probably double the leading cpa ed slot will tell you they'll probably double there's only two ways it can make money legislatively or administratively they're either going to print the money or they're going to raise the taxes now i got a question for everybody there if they can't pay the bills they got and we've got a trillion dollar deficit now where are they going to get the money to pay for this other trillions of dollars they've just spent even in coronavirus? Mm -hmm. That's a good They're question. They're coming after us. Yeah. Are they going to come after the 90% of Americans who don't have an IRA? Or are they going to come after the 10% of us who do? Yep. They're going to come after the IRAs. They're going to raise everybody's taxes, even in the income taxes. But the IRAs are really going to fill it. So if you want to insulate yourself or protect yourself, you've got to learn different banking methods. And you've got to learn that real estate and insurance are the two most tax-friendly things you can put your money into. And you guys need to read this book by David McKnight called The Power of Zero. I have a movie documentary that I can send people a copy of. If they go to my website, www.YourSafeMoneySolution.com, um, and send me an email, I can send you a copy. Um, Tax-Free Retirement by Patrick Kelly. Uh, the Volatility Shield by David McKnight. That's another David McKnight book. These are all great books. But remember when I was talking about how you can actually negate interest with by changing your mortgage over to a different account? We show people how to co how to get rid of paying compound interest on a mortgage and of how to pay simple interest by using a line of credit or a checking account. And that is an amazing strategy we call velocity banking. And if you if you have you ever heard of the guy that wrote Rich Dad Poor Dad Tom, his name's Robert Kiyosaki. Yeah, you made sure I knew that book. book <laughs> yeah, you heard of this book? I got it. Okay, so employees are self-employed people. The problem with them is they've got to trade time for dollars. So if you're sick that day and you can't go to work, how much money do you make? Zippo. Bingo. Mm -hmm. But if you think like a business owner or an investor, 
you think like Warren Buffett and he says, the day that you finally learn how to make money in your sleep is the day that you'll become rich. That's how you get rich. So if you had a checking account, right now your money's sitting in checking. If you and Tracy are not using your debit cards, is your money moving forward or backward? Backward. It's actually moving backward because yeah. of what? Inflation, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not doing anything. It's stale. It's musty. It's mildewing in a checking account. But if we could show you how to put your money into a checking account where it was negating 70% of the interest that you were going to pay on all your debts, mortgage included, wouldn't that be like putting a set of car hearts on your paycheck and a set of boxing gloves on it so that your money could go to work for you while you're sleeping, negating debt, yeah. negating interest? Because simple interest accounts, they, they count up the interest daily. So we show you how to convert your mortgage over or do a chunking method with part of it using the equity in your home. You can pay your house off in five to seven years on average. And you can read this book by Clayton Morris. Now, I'm writing my own book. It's not in published yet. But you can go to my website, YourSafeMoneySolution.com, and you can watch some videos on there. And I show people how to become debt-free. Now, I'm going to bring up another slide and show you how amazing when you use the two strategies that I just covered, infinite banking and velocity banking together, how amazing it is. Because we are now doing better than a regular savings account. We're now doing better than a regular checking account. We can show people how to put their assets into a tax-free place and leverage other people's money as well. So this very next one, uh, we're going to show you how putting these two strategies together is, does just like oil to increase the efficiency and longevity of moving parts made of steel. If we take this gal right here. She's in, she's in Texas, and Sandra gave me permission to use her numbers. Sandra had a Florida, a Florida mortgage and a Texas mortgage. And she had two Bank of America credit cards, a USA, a Chase, a City card, and this ISPC card. This looks pretty typical for most Americans, a couple hundred thousand in debt. She's going to be paying on that debt for 29 years. Sandra's 48 years old. She can be in debt till she's 77. Now, I don't know about you, Tom, but I don't want to be 12 years into retirement paying for my house, and neither did Sandra. I showed her by changing where she money her money goes. If you look at her minimum payments in this column right here, over here is what she was sending because she hated this. She was sending 1000 a month to her USAA card because she hates keeping a balance on it. As you, as you can tell, it's her lowest card, and she realized real fast that it was the cheapest card that she could put uh, her, expended, her expenses onto. So she was playing whack-a-mole. Isn't this what we all do? Yeah. We, we pay that bill, pay that bill, pay that bill in April. Here comes May. Pay that bill, pay that bill. It's just like going to the fair and all those little gophers are popping up. You ever play that game, Tom, and you yeah. hit them in the head? I do. That's whack-a-mole. That's what we do with our bills. I play that in politics. <laughs> Sorry. So some people use the Dave Ramsey method. We actually show you how to not only snowball your debt, but how to also leverage other people's money. And she's on track now to be debt-free in four and a half years and pay over $168,000 less interest. Is wow. that amazing or what? That's absolutely amazing. So with velocity banking and the infinite banking concept, it's quite amazing what happens. Instead of being on track with compound interest to pay her mortgage off in 30 years, Sandra put her mortgage into a line of credit. We use what we call paycheck parking, and she'll be debt-free in less than five years. The, you guys know what an amortization schedule looks like. If you draw a $400,000 mortgage out that's paid off in 30 years, it looks like that. But what's underneath this line is called interest. What's above the line is called principal. Have you ever wondered why two-thirds of your payment, if let's say your payment on these mortgages, on a mortgage like 400000 or whatever it was, like it says right here, was two grand? Ever wonder why 1150 is interest and only 850 is principal? It ain't even that good. It's more like thirteen fifty and six fifty when you start out, isn't it, Tom? Yes, it is. And you're about halfway through the loan before you're fifty fifty on principal and interest on your payment. And banks know that the average person refinances every eight and a half years. So what they do is they start calling you and Tracy between years five and fourteen. They don't want you getting halfway through this mortgage because when you start getting pay dirt and paying this thing down and seeing your balance drop like a rock, your chances of refinancing. Thanks. Is it possible that the biggest cash heist in history 
is banking. Amen. It Think is. about this for a moment with me, Tom. Every American is taking, let's just use $5,000 as the average household. We're all taking sixty grand a year to the bank. 600000 in 10 years. That's $1.8 million, million in 30 years, which isn't even our whole working life. But over a couple million dollars in the average person's working life is flowing through a checking and a savings account. Forget about your financial advisor. Forget about if your money's in a trust fund, a CD, the IRA, stock market, an annuity, life insurance. Forget about that. Everybody's money first goes into checking and saving, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. If you were a jeweler and you could get your inventory for free, would you be more or less profitable? Way more profitable. You'd be highly profitable. Yep. If you could cut firewood and all of a sudden it was just delivered to your house and sitting in your yard ready to chop it up. and Maybe it was already chopped. It was ready to go. Banks... Every time someone just walks in the door, why do you think they give us a lollipop? Because we're suckers. Don't oh. Be a sucker. Read that's, the book, How Money Works. That's a horrible thought, man. They give you a lollipop because they know you're a sucker. Oh. You're going into the bank and you're giving them your money in a checking and savings. You're getting nothing for it. And you're willing to go buy your own money back in the form of Yes, it is. And I thought just... That's why I love to do what I do. I like to educate and teach because financial education, you ever wonder why it's not taught in school? Why aren't your kids taking finance in school? They don't even offer it, Tom. Because they want us to be subservient, just like everything else they don't teach us. They have some kind of a finance class in Tulane. Yeah. They should be teaching. They should be teaching. They should be showing people flow charts and, and graphs and what your money can do over time with compound interest. Like some of these banks, these banking books teach. They don't teach about money. They don't teach about wealth. They don't teach about mortgages in school. They don't teach about the difference between a business owner and an investor. How profitable would America be if we taught our kids the difference between business, between being an entrepreneur or just being an employee? Oh, mm -hmm. my word. Yeah. Do you think there's a conspiracy to keep the poor poor and the rich rich? I definitely know there is. <laughs> the biggest difference between the rich and the poor is the price of the CPA that you can afford to hire. And CPA will even tell you, like a book like this by Brian Bloom, mm -hmm. Sessions of a CPA, they'll even tell you that when they see this method, it just makes sense. That the two most tax-friendly things are real estate and life insurance. Now, a lot of people are listening to this Whew. podcast and thinking, but Jason, but Tom, I don't have the money to invest in real estate and life insurance. You might be surprised what we can do, even if you're sitting there and you're on Social Security on a fixed income, what we might be able to do on a discovery call to help you get more spendable cash flow. It's pretty amazing. So I do recommend people reach out. I'm going to put it back up on the screen one more time. But Tom, it's exciting to be able to teach this and try to help somebody because, you know, let's just face it, financial stress, it limits your choices and it robs you of your freedom. That's me over there on the left. <laughs> well, so I got to so I got to so I'm going to I'm gonna have to I'm going to have to play bad cop for a minute. So and, and I've told you this before, and it's nothing that you're not already used to about me anyway, unless you've forgotten in the amount of time that we met. So you're a you're a um, you are one of the sharpest, well-spoken, articulate, fast talking, smooth uh Salespeople I have ever met. You would be the only one that could be able to get me into the insurance business and to be able to get me to take one of the most difficult tests I've ever taken in my life and still trust you even after that. And so I, I wanted to be able to, so the people that listen to this, I really want to be able to hit this home because a lot of my peeps are skeptics. We're looking at the Federal Reserve Act. We're talking about the, you know, the 16th and 17th Amendment. We're talking about legalized plunder. They know it all. The thing that I loved about you, though, and always have, is that you're a man of faith, and I'm hoping that's okay to say, um, because, e because even people that don't have faith still need somebody that makes good decisions and that can be trustworthy, and I won't get into the irony of that. But Jason's, Jason's desire in an effort to be able to obviously make money for himself like the rest of us do, his priority is making sure that he helps his people. And so um, I know that he's, I said all those things, that he's slick and he's 
sharp and he's articulate and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's a here's a slick snake oil salesman. <laughs> but I wanted to be able to add the personal touch to that to be able to talk about um, about how I know him and about how I feel confident in referring him to those that are interested in what he's talking about. So um, in a roundabout way, that was my way of um, of hanging you out to dry, at least playing the bad cop. But it's really important because people people really don't know. You know, you see your reviews on products and you see five star reviews. And even if they're five star reviews, you still doubt they're real. Right. And then and then and then you. I think you can actually buy clicks for YouTube or something. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, my and my sites and all of my social media platforms and all of those things is designed on t on giving people the absolute absolute truth as I know it, uh, the ability to be able to make corrections when I need to, but to be able to share with them perspectives from a variety of different areas in life uh, for which they may not know. You know, I did an interview before with a oxygen hyperbarics technologist i mean how many people actually know about what that works for you know and finances is something that everybody's struggling with especially coronavirus um and so it was uh it was really an opportune time to be able to get you on and discuss uh you know to discuss what you're doing and um i'm hoping that uh people re will reach out to you on what to do about uh their situation and see how you might be able to help them so i just appreciate yeah. you taking the time to chat with me structure things, we can put all of that to where the only an interest only payment was due, maybe five, six, seven hundred bucks. Now say twenty three hundred dollars is teed up. That new twenty three hundred dollars becomes one humongous principal payment on the entire amount of debt. And if this person had a hundred thousand dollars worth of debt and you got twenty three hundred dollars in principal payments, you can do the math in your head. It only takes 40 some odd months to be debt free. So, Jason, what is people's major apprehension in um, when they hear the word insurance? Do you know where? I mean, you've been in sell. You know, you, you, where did that come from? People have met people that were pushy. That, you know, they think, oh, you pay, 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 and you never collect. But when you design the type of insurance that we're talking about, we design it backwards. Not so much for the death benefit or the protection element, but we design it for cash build. Once a person covers the basis uh, costs in the policy with the cost of insurance, which is usually anywhere from three to four or five years, the policy is already growing by more than the premium they're putting in. So the beauty of it is within 10 years, the average adult has returned all the premium to the policy and it's growing by more than they're putting in. You can even get 10 year paid up policies. That's a way to get free life insurance. And if you've got one or two or $300,000 saved up in there, from money that we freed up, just showing you how to change. Put just if I could just stand up for a minute, okay? So well, you can't see it because the camera. But if you just imagine me taking money out of my left pocket and putting it in my right pocket, that's all you're doing right now. In the left pocket, the the banker's got his hand in there. Your insurance agent, your financial advisor, and Uncle Sam, the Internal Revenue Service. But in your right pocket, just pretend with me for a minute. There's only one person's hand fits in that pocket and that's yours when you learn these methods you'll learn how to get control of your finances where that you're making money when it's going in and you're making money when it's going out because in our one flagship strategy the infinite banking strategy using the insurance policy you even get paid when you loan the money because it it costs about four four and a half percent to loan it and then when you put it back the dividends are paying five and a half six and a half percent so, Tom, if you knew you could make a percent or two every time you borrowed money, how many times would you borrow it? All the time. Much as you could. You'd, yeah. you'd loan it to your kids, to your family, anybody that you knew would pay you back. So the beauty of it is you can take two guys going to buy a $30,000 pickup. It goes into the dealership and finances it. One brother, he finances it for 6% at 60 months. He's going to pay $34,799 for that pickup. But the other brother, he borrows it from the policy. Now... The cool thing about these life policies is the actual money came from the death benefit. They still pretend the 30,000s in their earning cash. As long as he pays the loan back to himself, he collects compound interest on the full 30, which is 10,555. So even if his loan costs the same as it did at the dealership to borrow it, the 4,799, Tom, there's $5,500 new money you didn't have before. 
So the smart brother technically paid 24 for the same pickup that his brother paid 34. That's huge. Oh my gosh. So when you use a life insurance policy as a bank, you will understand why so many of these people are writing books about becoming your own banker. And instead of looking at the banking system, look at what they do. Like I showed you in this book, even banks understand this policy and they're doing, they, they understand policies like this and they're doing what I'm talking about. So the reason I'm holding these books up to the screen is even though it might seem like I talk fast, I get excited and I seem like a slick willy, yeah. I'm backing it up with facts and things you can read. And I provide my clients with reading material to do their due diligence and videos that they can watch. And if we can't save them money, there ain't no charge for us helping them. Simple as that. I think it would be fun to be able to to, uh, to just do a, do a sample scenario, uh, maybe in another uh, video, if you're interested in doing Absolutely. that. And uh, talk about it. I mean, I'd like to be able to just open up my finances just to be able to see, you know, because I'm all about being real, but I think my wife might have a problem with that. <laughs> but because uh, I, I know. Would, I think she would like it, but I don't think she, yeah, she probably wouldn't want to air it on your Facebook channel. We live, we I live, think she would enjoy it if we had a three way call sometime and yeah. just to show you how much it can benefit well, you. Well, we live, we're, well, we're, I think we're going to end up doing that anyway, but um, uh, off the air. But I'm, I was just saying, in an effort to be able to walk people through the process to be able to see. What it actually yeah, we looks could like. use fictitious nut. We could do that. Well, because I mean, I live. I know I do. And uh, let's see. Um, I know there's others on here that live really close to the vest, a lot closer than we'd want to. And it would be really nice to be able to unfold this and unpack this, to be able to see what this looks like with real numbers. And so, um, yeah. I think it would be fun to, if you're interested in doing it. I know you're a busy guy, and I guess I am too. Um, but. You know, we're all looking. Yeah, for and in the, mean, in the meanwhile, right. direct them to my website, yoursafemoneysolution.com, and they can actually see me talking about it right there, and they can book a discovery call for themselves if they don't if they don't want to wait to get started. Because I'll tell you, I didn't sleep for about three days very well at all when I came across this in 2017. I got a webcam. I started licensing in other states, and bam, I hit 40 states in no time, Tom. And you know me, I used to only run in Idaho. You know, you see all those pins up there? You were I only come down to your area. Let's be specific. Pin Boise. You were only physically running in Idaho. You've been running in 57 states. According to what Obama said, you've been running in 57 states since I've known you. So, uh, you, know, you remember when I met you, what I was doing? My, I had a box in the back of my truck, and it was packed with applications. Uh -huh. And I had a bag. And, I mean, I was buying leads of people wanting life insurance. And I was traveling, traveling, traveling. Yeah. Just doing the life insurance part of it, not even knowing about the infinite banking concept, yeah. not even knowing about these different things with banking that could accelerate financial freedom. Yeah. Well, let's so I realized I needed to leverage time. And when I got with Concierge for Advisors, which is a financial distribution platform, mm -hmm. and now I teach it to financial advisors, I'm no longer handing out breads of loaves of bread and fishes. I'm handing out fish and poles, baby. Yeah. That's good. And I like that because, you know, I can multiply my effect. If I can teach financial advisors these strategies, they can go teach their clients. Hey, Tom and Myrtle, stop using the checking and savings account for all your stuff. You know, it can pass through there, but learn how to reallocate money so that you're not just giving it to the bank year after year, year in and year out. As you start doing back to the bank what they've been doing to you. If I were to ask you, Tom, the average person depositing $2 million in their working life, can you imagine if they got a 6% rate of return, didn't have to pay tax on it, was compound interest, how much that money that would be, starting saving is at 18 when they start earning money, and stop at 65? Well, you know, and also, I it's just... It's unreal how many times. That I, money will double every 12 years. I did think of another thing, too, and that is that... Um, uh, th there are people that are uh, currently employed and they haven't had raises in years. And so, you know, they, you know, you can go and beg for crumbs from your employer and all of that, but Hey, this is another way to give yourself a raise, man. You know, if you, if you That's love, right. if you love where you work and you and and you know, and the only problem is that you can't get a raise in, but you feel like you're lucky to get a job, then that's another way to get a raise. So, um, it's a way to make your money work for you instead of you having to work so hard for it. Definitely, definitely. So if you don't have videos like this uh, currently up on your website and you're interested in doing a follow-up, let's do that sometime. Yeah, I would love to. I think this has been fun. It's the first time I've done a live podcast like this, and I planned on flying out to Minneapolis and recording some with ECA Marketing, and I haven't done that yet. But, yeah, I think it would be fun. 
Well, and I definitely would put a link to this on my site. So hopefully it'll help people find you as well. There are guys out here too, unless it's free going out there, but there are guys here that will do that for you too. So, yeah. Yeah. So if that's of interest, let me know anyway. Awesome. Well, uh, we're, uh, we're at about 45. That's about good. Do you have anything else you want to drop before we end the call? No, but you need to tell Tracy uh, I said hello. I didn't see her walk by in the background, but you need to wave at her for me and tell her I said hi. Oh, she's work. She's uh, she's at work, and she'll be out later this afternoon. She still have her big sewing machine, do her embroidery uh, and whatnot. That's it. That's quilting. It. Yeah, yeah. We're do we? Yeah, we do. Yeah, she's got her quilting business, and she's been. Now we got grandkids nowadays, and my wife's been uh, making stuff for our grandkids. Oh, good. And, and no phone call is complete without show and tell. So I got to put something up to the screen here. <laughs> look, at, look at these cuties, man. Oh, hang on. Let, them, let it focus. There you go. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got three grandkids down in Twin Falls. So we go to South Idaho several times a year. So one of these times I need to stop in Barbara Lane. Most of the time I text you to see if you're there. And I don't hear back from you, and I pass on by, and then I hear from you like the next day, and you say, no, I'm in an event off in Walkaman, too. You know, you're off in who knows where. <laughs> yeah, I'm off somewhere else. Yeah, for sure. Well, well, we'll figure it out. I appreciate your time, Jason. Thanks for the call. And if anybody has any questions or anything, uh, you can check out Jason and his website, YourSafeMoneySolutions.com. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, no S on the end. Oh, your okay. Safe Money Solutions. Solution. Okay. Yeah, because there yes. is. Yes.com. All right, buddy. Well, we'll talk again soon. All right, Tom. Thanks, Good man. Good talking to you today. Take care. You too. Yep. Bye. Bye.